the others who engage in conversation were personal exchanges between them. They are not meant for the records of this house. And so please, official reports don't capture that. To, to do the presentation of the statement. So now with your leave. Yes. Majority deputy. This morning, this afternoon, you just said that the business committee must program the date in which the decision for the budget statement and the budget policy will be taken. Mr. Speaker, it is missing in this business statement before us. Mr. Speaker, it is only right that we program it, then we know exactly the date that we will take that decision. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, attached to the business statement is a schedule for submission of committee reports and debate of annual estimate for the 2024 financial year, Mr. Speaker. And you can see that some of the submission, date for submission of reports is Thursday, Friday of next week. Mr. Speaker, how can we adopt or debate a report on the estimate of ministries, departments, and agencies, as well as constitutional bodies, when the budget policy itself we have not taken a debate on. Mr. Speaker, that cannot be right. That cannot be right until we take decision on the policy. We cannot consider the estimates for ministries, departments, and agencies, as well as the constitutional bodies. Because this policy is what gives rise to the estimate. Mr. Speaker, I submit that this, this schedule be pushed further to the following week until a decision has been taken by this House on the budget policy. Mr. Speaker, I still submit. Yes. First, first issue has to do with the business statement that has been presented by the Deputy Majority Whip. The Speaker on page 3, you have statements, presentation of papers, annual budget estimates of the audit service for the year ending 31st December 2024. And it goes on. The Speaker, earlier you gave a directive that the budget statement is still before the House and that later this week, I mean next week, the decision will be taken on what the status of the budget is. So when I have this listed on Monday and the indication is that the budget estimates will be presented on Monday and next week starts from Monday, I am wondering what that means as far as your earlier directive that the final decision on the budget will be taken sometime next week is concerned. So that's the guidance, first of all, that I want. The second guidance, Mr. Speaker, relates to the condition of the House this afternoon. Mr. Speaker, when I look at the votes and proceedings, and I look at number eight, I mean, page eight, you have members who were absent with permission, and their names are captured on page 8 of the votes and proceedings. The Speaker, when you look at our standing orders also, standing order 15.2 says that, I mean, starting from 1, every member shall attend the service of the House unless leave of absence has been given him by Mr. Speaker. To leave of absence may be given by Mr. Speaker to any member who shows sufficient cause justifying his absence or who is away on social on official or parliamentary duties. 16.2 says a member shall be excused from service on the House or any committee so long as he has leave of absence. The speaker, so my second guidance sought from you is in relation to the condition of the House today. 
when I look at the uh, 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 other side, I see that most of the seats behind the leadership of the majority is empty. And I want to be guided. If this is as a result of uh, absence that have been sought from you, and if it has been granted, thank you very much. Yes, Honorable Ablakla. I must go to right on the speaker. Right on the speaker. Told the House and the Minority Leader made the point that the Electoral Commission has to come even before the budget got presented. And we were told that they were arranged for the Electoral Commission to come and brief the House. So I am only amplifying that call. It's not a personal request. I'm only insisting that the call by the House that they should come, or to, they have to be brought for them to for them to brief us. It's so important that they brief us before 19th happens, Mr. Speaker. I thank you. I'll number the, the majority and I've numbered the majority side. The number is 30. Yes. I've alluded to that. Uh, so, Chairman, just to... You know, there's... I'm happy you stated that you used to teach conflict of the laws and law of contract. Now, you know the, ev the evidential rule, burden of proof, particularly in criminal jurisprudence, proof beyond reasonable doubt. Do you share the view that we should criminalize unexplained wealth in Ghana? Do you share the view? that we should criminalize and explain wealth in Ghana. It is a bit too, honorable chair, it is a bit too overbroad uh, to state uh, unexplained wealth. Uh, in criminal jurisprudence, uh, legal criminal constructs should be uh, more pointed, uh, more focused, and clearly delineated because of the specter of someone ending up in jail, losing his liberty, or uh, lo uh, being fined heftily for, 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 for an amount. And so if we are to place it in proper context, unexplained wealth, I would say that if the person cannot reasonably explain as much against his lawful income, the amount of money in question then that aspect, in my opinion, should be criminalized. But if you can reasonably explain how you came about that amount of money, uh, then uh, 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 that should be allowable, that should be acceptable. So in your context, unexplained wealth will be reasonable explanation of the source of that uh, uh, property wealth or, or, or funds. Chairman, just to take the nominee, I appreciate your response to it. If you take the United Kingdom today, where Ghana largely borrowed its uh, legal uh, system, largely, they now, for purposes of combating economic crime and fighting corruption, have what they call a reverse burden of proof, that the onus must shift, that when those assets cannot be explained for, an irrebatable presumption is that they are acquired illegally, fraudulently. It may be taking advantage of the state and its resources. So they now go for a reverse burden of proof. Will you subscribe to that for Ghana in our quest, our collective quest to fight corruption? Thank you, Chair. And I will, Chair, I'll link it to my, first, uh, my answer to the first question. Also, we're pointing out that uh, criminal constructs are very, very dangerous, if not well thought out. A reverse onus clause, as uh, the Honorable Member right, right, rightly put it, puts the burden uh, on the accused person to explain, uh, as to, uh, uh, to explain one way or the other the, 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 the charge against him, rather than the prosecution bearing the burden of proving his guilt. In the context in which I answered the first question, of course, 
if the construct here is that you cannot reasonably explain as to how you came by that wealth or property matched against your lawful income, then it presupposes that I have already placed the onus on you to show as to how you came lawfully in possession of that wealth, property, or funds. So in that context, my answer will be yes. So, Chairman, still there, you have like a public official, maybe a public procurement authority, who has nine million in his account. And for purposes of accountability, that's why every country that is committed to fighting corruption has asset declaration regimes. And the essence is that you should be able to match incomes, legitimate and lawful, with unexplained wealth. Now, you have this nine million in the account of a public official, and maybe three, four years back, that money was not there. It's probably because he's associated with the political authority in power, and his income uh, cannot explain a nine million in his account. If you were a special prosecutor and that was brought to you, your attention by an ombudsman in a republic, what would be your attitude to dealing with this matter? Thank you, Chair. Honorable Chair, as I stated, uh, it should be matched against your lawful income. And so I'll be looking up in respect of the sources of that income. Perhaps the person in question uh, earns some other income from some other vocation. Maybe he has a cocoa farm somewhere in a forest area somewhere and he earns money from it. That would be lawful. So whatever the source of the income is should be lawful. So the so aggregate... Accepted, uh, Chair, accepted. So now, is it not the case that the state could say, okay, come and explain to us in the context of the British system how you got this nine million. That's the reverse burden of proof. The uh, proof beyond reasonable doubt is no longer going to be the onus on the state. But we cannot explain how come you have nine, ten million as public official in your account. And legitimately, there's nobody in Ghana from the present through ministers of state except those undertaking businesses who should have that quantum of money. You are to help us fight corruption. I'm not naive to assume that I'm coming to stop corruption. There is no way I can stop corruption. God himself will, will, will not even uh, 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 claim to that. But I am going to make corruption very costly. Very, very costly to engage in. In terms of conflict of interest. First, I'm going to institute what I call pressure for progress. And in, the, in this quest, there will be a systemic review of what all was, public agencies. What was the word you... I said, I have termed it pressure for progress. Pressure for, for progress. Yes. Very well. I thought it was a Latin word you... No. So I think you <laughs> get it out. I'm going to institute systemic reviews of public sector institutions and the development of integrity plans. And here, this is what I intend to do. But why can't we have our own corruption perceptions index, for instance? Why can't I rank public sector agencies against each other and at the end of the year publicize the results as to which institution is performing well and which institution is not performing well. In that quest, if you are head of an institution and persistently your institution is drawing the short straw in terms of uh, uh, the perception of corruption from the point of view of experts, 
from the point of view of business people, you will set up. Of rather regressive and dismissive judicial decisions in respect of cases involving the OSP with troubling consequences. And it seems to us that a careful examination of these outcomes portends a disturbing spectre that the fight against corruption is being hampered to the disbenefit of us all. And I do not say these things lightly. Four instances will suffice. In one case, the OSP applied to the High Court for a confirmation of a freezing order in respect of a deceased person's estate. The judge refused to confirm the order by, in effect, holding that the OSP had come too late since the person of interest had died and that his death had extinguished the inquiry commenced after the occurrence of death. We publicly commented on this outcome. And the danger of this outcome is obvious, members of the press. It is to the effect that a person may, in his lifetime, acquire property through corruption, and then, upon his demise, happily pass on the corruptly acquired property to his estate, and by so doing, extinguish all scrutiny as to the propriety or otherwise of the acquisition of the property, because his corrupt activities were not discovered during his lifetime. In the second instance, the OSP had declared as wanted a person it believed to be a fugitive from justice. The person, through his lawyer, proceeded to the Human Rights Court on an ex parte application. And the judge, without even an inquiry as to why the OSP believed him to be a fugitive from justice, issued an injunction that the OSP should not arrest the person for a period of 10 days. Members of the press, this is dangerous. It encourages criminal suspects to go before the courts to seek injunction orders against law enforcement agencies from apprehending them. The judge did not advert his mind to the well-founded proposition that no one has the right not to be arrested. And he accorded the suspect a right not to be arrested. In the third instance, the OSP applied to the High Court for a confirmation of a seizure order and a freezing order in respect of a person who had just resigned from a ministerial position and had reported that large cash sums in foreign denominations had been stolen from her residence. In addition, the OSP subsequently discovered additional large cash sums in foreign denominations and cities still stashed in her residence. The judge hastily dismissed the OSP's application and ordered a return of the seized amounts and the defreezing of her property. And he proceeded to lash out at the OSP for not doing a thorough investigation without the slightest consideration that the seizure and freezing orders are designed by law to facilitate investigation into the affairs of suspects and not the other way around of requiring thorough investigations before the OSP can seize or freeze. The judge also completely ignored the fact that in almost every jurisdiction, including Ghana, it is extremely unusual and highly suspicious for a public officer to have such large car sums stashed in their homes, and that the circumstances of the case dictated pause and reflection and the granting of the OSP adequate time to carry out its investigation. In our estimation, the judge was only interested in the return of the money to the person of interest and nothing more. Then he proceeded to erect non-existent legal barriers to prevent the OSP from investigating the matter. I revisit this case. Members of the press, in the fourth instance, the OSP had issued an investigation report in respect of the grant of a customs advance ruling by the Customs Division of Ghana Revenue Authority. The report opined that there was an institu institutionalized culture of light-hearted light unconcern regarding impropriety of action at, at the Customs Division of Ghana Revenue Authority, which indicated a high propensity to engender corruption 
and corruption-related activities. Consequently, the Special Prosecutor directed the opening of a wider investigation in respect of the affairs of the Customs Division. Further, in pursuance of the Office's mandate of taking steps to prevent corruption, the Special Prosecutor directed remedial action by Ghana Revenue Authority. The authority has instituted processes on the basis of the Special Prosecutor's directive, which has saved the nation substantial revenue. Then comes the problem. The affected customs officials proceeded to the High Court to challenge the work of the OSP. The judge accused the OSP of constituting itself into a court and a commission of inquiry by making findings. In doing so, the judge conveniently shut his eyes to an express statutory provision that the OSP has the mandate to publish detected acts of corruption, and that was exactly what the OSP had done in the report. I wish it had ended there, but worse. The judge then proceeded to prohibit the OSP from further investigating the affected persons, members of the press. The judge fell into the grievous fault of what he accused the OSP of by outlandishly going beyond his jurisdiction with a, pur a purported clothing of the affected persons with immunity from investigation and hence immunity from prosecution. But there is doom looming ahead of us that very soon a murderer will boldly walk to court to seek an, injun an injunction. Should I feel frustrated and resign? I took an oath when I was sworn in. And in my life, when I take on the reins to do something, I do it to the best of my ability. I often say to you, those who do not understand you, please forgive me. You see, I'm a young one, 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 But there is doom looming ahead of us that very soon a murderer will boldly walk to court to seek an, injun an injunction. Should I feel frustrated and resign? I took an oath when I was sworn in. And in my life, when I take on the reins to do something, I do it to the best of my ability. I often say what you those who do not understand you, please forgive me. They say, I'm a young man. 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 Yes. But there is doom looming ahead of us that very soon a murderer will boldly walk to court to seek an, injun an injunction. Ibrahim Mahfouz is Conservancy Secretary. It's been the most dominating issues throughout this election. Well, this is an internal contest. It is about who can lead the party in this constituency to capture the seat from the NDC. So it's an internal contest. Basically, we are a united force trying how to put ourselves together so that we can win the Yapi Kusobu seat for the first time for MPP. You see, uh, Honorable Jirapo has been an MP for two terms. The people have seen what he can do and what he cannot do. The people know who he is now. And we are presenting a very fresh candidate. All the three candidates who are vying for this contest are very new to the constituency. I'm not saying they are new to the constituency, but they are going to be new on the ticket of MPP. So they know what they can also do, and they are articulating what they can do for the constituency, as well as to help the party win uh, the 2024 parliamentary elections in Yapo Kusobu. Look, Yapo Kusobu constituency is winnable for MPP. If we put our axes together, if we remain united, we can surely snatch the seat from the NDC. Money. We are going to see the best candidates win it. 
We don't believe in money. We believe in who will deliver a seat for the new patriotic party. And that is what the delegates are out for. You can see the atmosphere here. There's nothing like vote buying whatsoever. The atmosphere is very cool. People are coming in. It's a walk-in process. They come in, walk, vote, and, take, and, and turn away. That is what uh, we are doing to ensure that we pick a formidable candidate. We have won the uh, Aspara. Uh, this is an internal contest. And so far as it is an internal contest, we don't need money to win the contest. And you will not be prepared to face the NDC. We need to put all our resources together towards uh, 2024. And that is what our delegates are out for. They are poised to select the best candidate so that we we'll snatch the seat from the NDC. That's a lot of money, oh. Yeah, I need more money. Show me more money. What are you to me? And, and you got all this just today? Just a few hours. Yeah. A bag full of cash. Wow. The two candidates who contested in the elections were Manaf Sowa and Nilantiv Banaman. There was heavy security at the center to ensure a peaceful pose. Neil Ante Bannerman, who contested Manaf, told the media during voting that he was sure to carry the day. Oh, I'm very confident. I think that my delegates know me. I know them and uh, we've come a long way. Looking at what we've got into, I don't think we are going to go back. We are just some few steps away from victory in 2024 and it's obvious in the audio deal. So I have no doubt in my mind that the, de the delegates will do the right thing by giving me the dot for a third time. By, by what margin do you think you are going to win? <laughs> It's interesting. I think that we'll look to God. Whatever margin he gives to us, we'll accept it. But then we are sure of it. Happily jubilating after the voting had come to an end. Supporters of Manaf Soa were happy singing and dancing when the results were declared. Oh, this year! 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 this year! Some of the delegates and supporters shared their thoughts. 
Man of no size. No size. Man of no size. No size. What are Because the MP before. We will be a eternity. And you himself have so I had to. And the papa will be with you. The to me, we need more. To be with you, and people before I say, Oh, Nepa, media, I will meet him. Go jam a box now. No, I'm going to be a man to a man. Because all me and you are my casa. It's me do box in one. Now I'm going to be a man. Me, how on a say, I'm going to be a man. I'm going And he said, Nepa, I'm going to be a man. Muni mi sabu ona meto mana na se muni matu amano e subi amuni so na matu amano bi e si se su atu amu e ti adana mo chana mu yimu no so o wini na so ko parliament. The original organizer of the NPP, Prince Obin, said he believes Manafsoa will bring a change and win the Odododiodio constituency seat from the NDC. In test, he has shown that he kept faith with the delegates and they have reposed some confidence in him, and I'm sure that he's going to transit that same plans and strategy into the general election and we can Shut get up. his seat for the for the second time the npp nominee elect manaf soa said he's going to capture the seat for i'm going to recapture the seat for the new party for the ND, uh, npp i'm going to recapture the seat i am coming from the strong stronghold of the ndc and none of their candidates can match me my name is maswali kansa reporting for metro news <laughs>
Well, things so far, I think I'm very happy with the results so far. It's really nice. I was happy with how you were greeted by the delegates? Oh yeah, I, I, I am. I mean, I mean, if it's a sign of things to come, then probably I can say I'm confident of victory. Yeah, but you know, some of these things you just have to wait until the last ballot is counted. That's when you'll be able to say with all degree of certainty that I mean, you've been victorious. So for now, let me just um, err on the side of caution and just wait. Once the final ballot is counted and I see I have an, uh, an, an unassailable victory. So at the end of the poll, we see Obin Fusu. What is the difference between the ordinary thief and a political thief? Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry, isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob but you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you because we choose them we vote them we blindly say we are not blind who is deceiving who the ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief is it not but we fight each other to defend and protect the political thief is that not what we do Thugs will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our job, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. This country is in serious trouble, ladies and gentlemen. We are in serious trouble. We need to rescue this country, ladies and gentlemen. The presidency has been so depraved, so, so muddied, so dirty, that I tell you in all sincerity as a Ghanaian, that I feel terribly sad today as a Ghanaian. We need to rescue this country. Wallah. Insha Allah. Please don't cry. We shall rescue our country. If you reach a certain stage in life and there is nobody who can look you in the eye and tell you the truth, you are doomed. And that is where our country has gotten to. We need to rescue this country. Wallah. And I feel very terrible as a Ghanaian at this time. Government is broke, government is broke. But people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type one, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type two. Type two, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, um, my term will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now and borrow money of the future and eat it now. Well, it's the 4th of December 2023. Welcome to Good Morning Ghana. We're live from the Peniel Studio at North Ridge and we're reaching you on Facebook is Metro TV Ghana and also Good Morning Ghana uh, all on Facebook. Follow us on channel 277 on DSTV as well. Uh, we thank God for giving us yet another day. It's Monday and we're going through uh, the week to discuss matters making the headlines in the country. I start by giving you the headlines of the newspapers. Daily Graphic, it says, Charity Akotia 2023, Best Farmer, Second Woman to Win Top Award. SHS1 reporting date remains today, GES. So they're sticking to the date 
and parents will have to run helter skelter. It's, oh, love this country. 60,000 hectares ready for agri zones. Church will continue to speak against looters of the National Corpus, Presby moderator. High profile personalities arrive for peacekeeping meeting. Ghanaian Times. Uh, at COP28 in Dubai, at COP28 in Dubai, President Wu's world leaders to support climate change. NPP often constituencies parliamentary primaries. Ahing, Hajide, Saki, Okoboy, others get not. All said for Maiden Tourism Investment Summit tomorrow. Akotia named 2023 National Best Farmer. 600 delegates attend UN Peacekeeping Ministerial Conference tomorrow. Delegate Akotia is best farmer will take most often seats most often seats Baumia uh, Lucy Blay and Stood uh Queen. What's that? Supumu Dunkwa okay Dunkwa Queen. Alan's butterfly shakes Kumasi. That's also here. And then uh we'll take most often seats Baumia as new entrance sweep. NPP primaries. Samia Uku heads to parliament. And um, well, uh, we also have Nana Dukia here who moved from uh, the Ekopong Krapim North down to Okankwe North. Keno Kojo Damwa also won the German South. Hey, hey, hey. Congratulations. Adentan, she also. Got that, uh, you know, bid. The new crusading guide, not or she, others aren't it. Stop undermining politicizing Songo Lagoon, Chiefs uh, Ada MP. Chiefs uh, caution Ada MP. Okay, your writing is a bit faded out. SHS fresh students report to school today. Kufia Sari rallies parents. Uh, Ghana Gas CEO represent. Sorry, Ghana Gas CEO presents 40,000 Ghana cities to 2023 Gas Challenge winners. Vomo was tactics delaying legal proceedings with National Security Minister. Akufuado outdoors forest uh, sector resilient country package. UAE commits 30 million US dollars. And the top right corner, Baumia's campaign manager takes over Krapim North constituency. The Insight newspaper. Peasant farmers reject 2024 budget, claim government economic policy failed to address food security and rising food prices. Citizen Kofi slams MPP over economic mismanagement. Carbon emissions from richest 1% pose fatal threats to humanity. Import, import restrictions bill. Mahama Yaga accuses government of violating IMF bailout conditions. The informer, $1 million allegation, Bakavomowo avoiding justice. Use technology di di digitalization to transform agri sector, Baumia urges farmers. Address gaps in Disability Act, GFD appeals to government. Varsity Dawn backs OSP in discharge of its constitutional mandate. EV policy will um, help cut down CO2 emissions. Energy Minister. And the top right corner in this issue, push school reopening to next year, GES told. But it's still happening today. The Inquisitor lies over UENR Medical School, Napo Sprays Mosquito. 2024 budget not approved. Parliamentary service clarifies. OSP on top gear despite orchestrated frustration. Sami Kapu Aoku takes over Ekapim North. Even, even this one too is attacking Kisi, 
ajabeni. Hey. <laughs> Samuel, Brian, Boabi, you have a missed call on the front page of the Inquisitor. <laughs> the Herald. <laughs> Napo on sale to Ghanaians as humble kneeling for MPP running mate slot. <laughs> anyway, Jubilee House Boy starts parliamentary journey. Alan Chema Tingman rejected. Uh, Guta Nukes endorsed Mahama's 24 hour economy policy. Coming up, more revelation on Kweku Bediakon's uh, gold key properties and its dealings in the country. The statesman, President Akufadu, endorses outdoors Ghana's forest uh, sector resilient country package. President Akufadu, outdoors Ghana's forest sector resilient country package. Really? Our first reserve package is resilient. UN moves global peacekeeping conference to Accra. Massive boosts for youth uh, employment. Over 30,000 entrepreneurs benefit from 100 million Ghana cities grant. Aoku Ahi, Okoboy, others win MPP parliamentary slots. Vomo granted more time in legal battle with Kandapa. The Ghanaian publisher, Baumia to Harriet, Baumia to Harriet, Damwa, Ahi, Kozi, others. Your victory is the beginning of new service. Kandapa defamation court grants Vomo time to file defense. Methodist Church lost Natochi for her support. UN minister stormed Ghana for conference. The Ghanaian observer, Okufado outdoors Ghana's forest sector resilient country package. Kandapa's 10 million Ghana cities from its defamation case, Boma will cry for more time to file defense. Na Toshi, others on it. KNUSC claims victory over uh, UMAT and RMU in grand finale of gas challenge. Baumia Hills MPP primaries says party will win majority of orphan seats. The custodian, Bakavomawo, begs court for time to face Kandapa. Akufado outlines Ghana's policy to on climate change as UAE commits $30 million. Methodist Church honors Nato Shi, others. Congratulations, ma'am. Baumia's campaign manager takes over Ekrapim North. Will grab more orphan seats from NDC, Baumia. UN picks Accra for Global Peace Conference. The finder. All set for Made in Tourism Investment Summit tomorrow. High Court grants Vomao extra time in Kandapa's case. Uh, UAE grants Ghana's, Ghana $30 million as President Akufuado rallies world leaders to support nature, positive action to tackle climate change. Methodist Church owners Irina Toshi Awuku, acclaimed parliamentary candidate of Ekapim North. And then on the front page of the Daily Post, of Mahama's 24-hour economy, China and India will still be wallowing in abject poverty and still be labeled as third world countries had, M, uh, okay, had Mao or Gaddafi falling for your kind of backward thinking. NDC East London branch to Manasseh Azuri. Honorable Joyce, Joyce Lynn Tete, honored by Women's Choice Award Africa. Congratulations. APAC reviews agony of rice farmers in Busa South. Anyone who says Mohammed's 24 hour economy proposal is not good does not understand politics. Alan declares jabbing Baumia. Anyway, that's interesting too. And that's <laughs> all we have for you on the front page of the papers. Let's take a breather. We'll be back.
so many styles to choose, but there's only one sure way to pay. Momo? Yes. Oh, yes. Got a payment to make? Just Momo it. MGM. Ready for something refreshing and great tasting? For your kids' enjoyment? Angel Cola! For your graduation enjoyment? Angel Cola! Beach Hangout? Angel Cola! For all your refreshing moments? Angel Cola! For your parties, get-togethers, events and celebrations, enjoy a chilled bottle of Angel Cola. Radio Grandma, today is your day. Over to you. Thank you. Enjoyment Cola. Angel Cola. The Enjoyment Cola. Enjoy all your moments and fun time with Angel Cola. This advert is FDA approved. Anti-cavity. Gum protection. Brighter teeth and fresh bread. I'm a fair missy way. The patch of Bantama. Matches. That's a cycle. It's a smile. The fresh breath. Me, Jiddy said we used to kill 360 toothpaste. Some me kind. Kill 360 toothpaste. That's Kia. Kill 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Only him jump kasa kasa kasa. He ne ko sing. Kill 360 did the way. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. <laughs> and you will see so fine in kika when you ne ye. Cal 360 toothpaste. Happy smile. Cal 360 toothpaste. Anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kill. Happy smile. This other is FDA approved. Discover the perfect blend of quality, modern elegance, and affordability with Kingdom Home Real Estate. At Kingdom Home Real Estate, we cater to both local and international clients, offering exceptional housing options in Ibri and Ikropong. Our properties are conveniently located, providing a tranquil atmosphere, top-notch security, and essential amenities such as electricity, water, and backup generators. Our strategic locations offer easy access to popular tourist destinations all within a 30-minute drive from Accra. Visit us in Ekropon right after the latter junction or in Ibri near the Ibri Girls Senior High School. Alternatively, you can reach us. Kingdom Home Real Estate, where your dream home becomes a reality. We are back bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Yeah, um, yeah. Betway starts strong with your front two with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm a foot now. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful M Punch Wana? Ha! Yes, and I'm young because I'm proud. Let's say problems room. It's not my own idea, mommy. Papa, patches and any other some kitua. I'm quite important, you know. I'm sure I'm more than one of you. I know some women do. Mommy, do I'm a fire, you know. And my own cram, you know. Who for one, I'm quite more. Eba. Add everything yourself. Mamma, I know what you do. Add the whole one to me, Nancy. And then you call end point. Oh, mommy, you know. And then why, dear, what's me? I'm sorry, Nancy. That's end point for you. Oh, my brother, too. Hello. Hey, I'm sure you watch it. Okay. A free bra would be end point. What does it? I'm a quiet, you know. Just 
enjoy the fruits of your labor they say but as humans aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes it often becomes challenging if not impossible to use our stairways day in day out with portable american pneumatic vacuum elevators pvs you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes it's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices the original comes in three custom made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200 lifts and elevators the elevator people at duale scott for example it's just 50 minutes drive from the central university college as well as just some five minutes drive from the ningo senior high school more so just in case you live somewhere in Adam and you want to take that excursion to many of those areas along the Volta estuary, this is the right property for you to invest in. Yes, for our Bronya Asasi promo, Estate Masters is offering this massive discount on all our tribe purchases. This includes free indenture, free site plan and a free site visit this December. Yena same na mwa high sense product ba kwa amafo di nwa dance e pa eye e sound system e bo musronko base ya base trouble so a trouble ya shada ya ne se onam bluetooth so a connect ma odam niam nyina na watie o sound papa bi connect your phone e ma high sense sound system ne tie onyo if you be brainy and a high sense e di abotre ada eniam bi ti se rice cooker Air fryer, ceramic hobby, and you may come halogen oven, blenders, hand blenders, and a kettle. A fair hand mixer, food processor, pressure cooker, contact grill, vacuum sealers, iron, vacuum cleaner, and a ice maker. And you may not be ne buo ene se de entwe nyinam kania enti na krofo ani gi ho saano say home appliances in kwa na opedia to high sense na wo fie be dawase high sense everyday prices for everyday people my son there's more blessing in giving than receiving kwa woni wo fie fo nyina en kobo de makers in sura no hu de wo the pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited am up to 67% discount. I was selected appliances as well. This is what I call quintessential immaculatability. The Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samayzongo Junction. I'm a K Pharmacy Dining. I'm a Yair Fatayman Boga Junction. A shaman, Falco Flat, Kumasi, a Hinema Coco Bain, a Safu Wachi Hospital Junction, Takradi, a few Kuma, number nine market. Two and two man and dad about the maker's blessing attack for from 0552-222-253 and 0552-222-254. Terms and conditions apply. The same in Gato Moon, I'm a sissy. All right, welcome back to the program. It is Good Morning Ghana. And um, this morning we have uh, a, 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 a bit of a challenge, you know, with guests, but we'll go through with that. Um, we have some communication coming from the MPP, so we'll deal with that maybe uh, at the right time. But we have Akusha scheduled to be on the program. Um, I, I don't know if there, there will be some changes later, but if there will be, definitely. 
um, you know. However, uh, Professor Benedicta Yarafusu is with me for Fusu Mensa. <laughs> is with me in the studio already. She is a member uh, of the National Communications Team as well of the NDC. You're welcome, Prof. Thank you for your time. It's been a while. Uh, when last did you come? Last month or two months ago? Oh, I think um, somewhere early last month or so. Yeah. Last, I, I don't remember, but somewhere early last month. Last mm. month. Anyway, have you, been, have, you, have you been following the 24-hour discussion? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean the 24-hour economy. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you have it. Yes. Okay, I'll I'll ask you some questions that. about that. But let me just do a quick one here. Uh, where, uh, are you imagining getting rewarded by something that you have done, maybe you have really done nothing, but being rewarded for it? And that is MTN promising you something within the Momo season. And it says that uh, download the Momo app and play uh, on your Play Store or App Store and use the Momo pay for your day-to-day -day transactions to merchant earlier either fill the qr code or merchant id and stand a chance of winning thousand ghana cities weekly uh, and uh, other amazing prizes other merchants are also not left out of the reward receiving payments and win keep using the your mtm momo pay and momo app and get rewarded there's a lot of exciting prizes also for everyone as well so uh, you transact more with momo pay and um, earn more points within the momo season if you want to actually you know partake, partake in that visit the www.momomerchantapplication.com.mtn.com.gh uh, for your momo business account today and the momo season says that uh, win with momo pay terms and conditions obviously apply now with your uh, brushing your your children's teeth this morning go for kel kids toothpaste because it's flavored with strawberry and uh, they will love the you know the flavor of the strawberry and will also want to brush in their teeth themselves you know how you can struggle sometimes just to put the brush in their mouth right so go for kel kids toothpaste and it protects the gums and prevents cavity as well it's recommended for children between two and six two age two and six right and it's a product from Samara Company Limited, producers of Sasso, and also uh, approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. Kel Kits is a happy smile. Now, Lift and Elevator is also giving you something to make movements easy in your homes, all right? So if you're just moving, uh, climbing stairs, then it's becoming very uh, difficult uh, for old age and infirmities. You want to uh, contact Lift and Elevators. It's a simple support elevator for both homes and offices, and it also can lift your goods as well. Now, uh, it, it can also come with custom-made wheelchair fitted, and will fit it in it for you, just in case you cannot stand and you have to sit. They will do that for you. It's affordable, and it can be installed in three days. So lift and elevators as a common or call them on 0200-53555 or send them an email on elevators at gmail.com elevators at gmail.com for consultations right and they will come uh, to your bank and call now i'm in alternative hospital uh, is also giving you something uh, to rely on just in case you probably it's the, it's the alternative way of solving your health issues and it is one of the best alternative medicine hospitals in ghana today right so for all your health consultations and counseling and physiotherapy, homeopathic medicines, go to Amin Alternative Medical Hospital, and that's best for you. Well, um, they also uh, have the best medical practitioners from KNUSD with a state-of-the-art medicine, medical equipment for, uh, created for your need, all right? And um, the most obscure uh, ailments can also be diagnosed and taken care of by Armin Alternative, Alternative Medical Hospital. It's at Clagon. It's located at Clagon, Lashibi Ashaman Road, near the underbridge. They operate from Monday to Saturday uh, at 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays at 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Call them on 0207-229-505 or 0244-227-192 to book your appointment. I'm in alternative medical hospital says that God is your healer. 
Star, now uh, uh, Black Star Press Limited also is telling you something that Black Star uh, Press Limited is printing press that you need now. Uh, it's a Black Star Limited. They grow uh, your business insight and inventive with inventive minds. Uh, it involves concepts and creations, right? They will do all that for you. Witness the beauty, diversity, and natural wonder with the works that you will never look elsewhere. That is the work of the Black Star Press Limited. And the Black Star Press Limited is associated with the Lion Head Group of Companies. Call them on 0200 for all your print works. At Black Stars Limited, we print everything printable except money, right? Right, so get to them and they will help you do all your printing and creative work for you. Press, Prof, let me come to you now. After making some money, <laughs> some mula. Yes, it's yes. important. Yes, very, very important. So tell us, what, what's the state of the 24 hour now? We have been talking about it for the past, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. And we've had um, some leaders, including the vice president, who is now the flag bearer for the MPP, also comment about it. I'm sure you must have yes. heard his comments. Uh, we've had economists also discuss it. We've had some, um, uh, I don't know, social commentators, I'll, I'll say. Some lawyers also make very interesting comments. Yeah. You know, the witchcraft comments. <laughs> I'm so not over that. <laughs> yeah, that's still, you know, lingering on my mind and all that. But, well, that has really ignited a conversation around it. And... Um, I think this morning I've just read uh, a headline of a university lecturer, or they say university don, uh, uh, you know, also talking about it. But where is the state now? What, what are we talking about it now? Yeah, okay. Good morning to our cherished uh, viewers, and uh, good morning to you again. Um, yeah, 24 hour economy uh, policy is. Definitely the game changer. Um, looking at the state of our economy now, but um, we are probably in, 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 in a state where the country is in a ditch. Uh, we've seen an increase in unemployment over the years. 2016, unemployment was around 8%. As mm -hmm. we are talking, unemployment is around 14%. And so if you want to... Um, get more people employed, then you need to do something outside the box. And this policy, as I earlier on indicated, is a game changer. You know, I was so surprised and quite disappointed in our vice president when he said it was a bad idea. And he was more or less doing a flip-flop. Um, after saying it was a bad idea, then he again said that, oh, 24-hour economy is already... Um, being implemented because we have job bars running 24 hours and that kind of stuff. But I think um, he seems, as Alan kept it, not to really understand uh, the policy and also politics. Uh, we are saying that the 24-hour economy, as has been discussed, is a deliberate government intervention to support and to encourage businesses so that they will be able to run 24 hours. So we have three shifts. Now, currently, most businesses and um, I would say state institutions run um, eight-hour economy. Now, when we talk about 24 hours economy, some people are also like, okay, so how is government agencies going to run this 24-hour economy? But uh, per the discussion and as we keep on um, uh, indicating, saying that people... Our, our, the policy intending that we run 24-hour economy doesn't mean that every institution or every business would want to run 24-hour economy. We are only saying that government is going to put measures in place. Government is creating a conducive atmosphere to encourage the private sector especially to thrive, to be able to run 24 hours. So if private sector let's say a business or an industry is running just eight hours, now you have the opportunity to expand the, the, the industry by employing two sets of 
uh, people. So that's if you are running three uh, shifts. And this will, is a game changer in the sense that um, now we have a lot of unemployment. We have um, a lot of students being chained out at the end of every year. And these individuals seem not to really see how the future looks like for them. And again, if our finance minister, I mean, our finance minister some time ago said that um, the government sector is choked and the public sector is also choked. So if these areas are choked, then the only place that you know, young ones can't look up to for employment is the private sector. But sadly enough, you know, we have government more or less also collapsing the private sector. Collapsing is through some of the policies that they, they roll out in a sense of maybe uh, collapse of banks, you know, that most private sectors, you know, uh, look up to or, yeah, they look up to, to, to get to loan, thrive. you know, to thrive. Now, but, a but, lot of but, banks but have been collapsed. You, you, and you we have also seen an increase in tariffs and also in taxes. So it's kind of choked a lot of um, businesses. And we have seen a lot of businesses collapse over the years because of the unconducive atmosphere for them to thrive. But, you know, the, the banks collapse, for example... Um, it definitely had rippling effects on the businesses because they were the ones supporting the businesses. Yeah. So we, we had the banks collapse, we had unemployment coming from the bank, and then we had its rippling effects also affecting businesses, also increasing even unemployment because yeah. these businesses have collapsed due to the fact that they cannot get these loans from the banks no more. But the, the, the action by the government is backed by legal, uh, with a legal frame or the policies that establishes the banks. So the, the, the banks, the finance minister will say, well, we safeguard the economy by, you know, looking into these banks' activities and, and streamlining them to fit what the policy requires for banks to do. That's what the explanation will actually, you know, um, look like or seem to be. Yeah, I and mean, when you look at the developed world, um, UK, US, there were some banks that were destroyed, but um, the government saw the need to support these banks mm -hmm. by ejecting some capital and giving them some timelines within which to pay back this. And I feel that that's what, in our case, we should have done. But when you look at the whole thing, it looks like um, a kind of political gimmick. That's what a lot of people including me, read into some of the closure, I mean, some of the banks that were closed uh, because um, government, yes, felt that there were banks that were distressed. But when you even interview or you ask some of these banks, these banks were owned, uh, were, were, I mean, contractors uh, owed these banks mm -hmm. and government also owed these contractors. contractors. So it kind of uh, replay effect. So if... The, the cycle of debt. A cycle of debt. And some of them is because of government owing contractors who have also gone to take loans from the bank but could not pay back on time. I believe that a government that care, a government that wants to see the private sector thrive should support these banks, you know, to, to recover and give them timelines for them to pay. But instead, they felt that what was necessary at that time was for them to close and I mean to close this bank and we have some banks that even when they send them to court um, it, it has come out that uh, what Bank of Ghana did and for that matter the government was wrong um, a typical example of this bank has to do with the, um, the uh, unique is it um, what's the name of this bank uh, divorce bank you know um, it was like a deliberate target to close it. But you see, as I in indicated earlier on, the 24-hour economy is to revamp or to give the necessary energy to the economy. And His Excellency John Muhammad, the visionary leader, the one who thinks outside the box, is saying that governments who create a deliberate um, effort to support businesses, support businesses by creating and also enabling the public to feel safe going out for example you are going out in night shift or at night shift you know the time you are going you feel that you are not secure and so there will be a kind of deliberate attempt to make sure that they send a lot of security men out there 
to protect individuals that will be working at night. And then also there will be an effort to also create, to also provide reliable and cheap paths to businesses that will hook up to um, this policy. This is just an attempt to make sure that the cost of production goes down and to also encourage more businesses to hook to these um, policy in order to expand their business. We also talk about tax incentives. All this is just attempt to help the private sector that this current government have suffocated because of the increase Let in me tariffs ask about, because of uh, the unfriendly um, business environment that has been created. Let me ask about Unibank. When the banks were collapsed, Unibank was one of the banks that were declared as insolvent. So, I mean, if, if the for, maybe because he's, he's NDC, so NDC is reading political, uh, you know, meanings into the action taken by the government or the finance minister. But if it was declared insolvent and it, the bank was truly insolvent, how is that the fault of, of government? Now, when, when you, when Dufour sent the matter to court, for them to investigate whether he was indeed at fault and whether Bank of Ghana was justified. You know, it came out that um, Bank of Ghana wasn't really justified to close um, his Unibank? bank. Because when you look at it, as I said, there were a chain of events that led into some um, banks, you know, uh, being declared as insolvent. If you are owing me and you've refused to pay me, how then do you come to accuse me of not having an X amount of money? Meanwhile, you know very well that if you had paid that money, I would have had enough money to carry out my business. So I think that some of the, the issues, when you look at it, it looks like a political uh, target. But nevertheless, uh, I wouldn't want to go to that tangent, but I think that it is a responsibility of every government to protect businesses because these businesses are... Um, uh, are the lifeline that would enable the economy to thrive. So you have collapsed businesses instead of supporting them. And these businesses are, I mean, they are individuals that are working there. So you have sent a number of people, you know, to join the unemployed um, people that are, I mean, the number of people who are already unemployed. What have you achieved by this? And when you look at the World Bank um, 2022 reports, they indicated that um, this government have added 850,000 people to uh, push them below push the poverty line. Below the poverty line, which means that, you know, it appears they've worsened our condition. They've, instead of they improving on the condition of individual, they have instead pushed a lot of more people back, I mean, into poverty line. And this could also be as a result of some of the policies that they implemented. Instead of saving a bank, and you look, you see the amount of money they use in order to collapse this bank, far more than the amount of money that they needed to have uh, salvaged the situation. Salvage the situation. So you could say that um, some of the policies, sometimes when you look at it, it looks like it's just a deliberate attempt to um, collapse some businesses. I have always said that there's this book, Ejapadie, and when you read it, Ejapadie tells you how and the strategy the MPP intend to put in place in order to capture certain sectors. And for me, as an individual, what when I read, it's, it's called Ejapadie. What book is that? It's, it's circulating. I mean... Who, who is the author? <laughs> for that, it's, 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 it's coming from the MPP camp. And I read this... It's coming thing. from the MPP camp? Yes. Honestly, I read this book long before the policy of collapsing of banks and this um, um, scandal, or uh, I would say, uh, if, issues that, that's came in 20, up. And so in 2016 uh, or 2015. It was circulating around, the, yeah, around that time. You know, and so when we started observing the collapse of banks. Some of us were like, okay, so could it be that... It's they, feeding into what was in It's feeding the into whatever that is written in that book. Because the book was that they want to capture the financial sector. And these are things that they intend to do um, um, 
in order to capture the financial sector. You know, whilst other banks were being collapsed, there were other banks that were being protected. For example, the, um, the, the data bank, you know, they also had some challenges. But what did we see? They were protected. Meanwhile, the banks that they collapsed could have also been protected. So again, I come back to the 24-hour economy to say that now that we have seen a lot of businesses suffocating because of the unfriendly business environment, His Excellency John Draman in Mahama have seen this as a challenge. And he says that the only way that we can revive the economy is to run 24-hour economy. And he intends to do that by creating I, the I, I want to ask a question. So, so it, it, it means that, uh, well, before that, before my question, let me just, um, uh, I'm told that Laratu has joined us via Zoom. Um, let me just confirm that. Laratu, good morning. Hello? Okay. Laratu is on her way into the studio. You can see her in her car. Laratu, can you unmute? Unmute. I'm sure because uh, she was giving late notice. <laughs> Ah, all right. So she was giving late notice, so she's trying to rush into the studio, but she's joining us Zoom before she gets here. Can, can I hear you now? Can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can. I, I can. You're, you're welcome. Good morning. Okay. I hope I hope you're listening in. We're discussing something. Yes, we're discussing something along the lines of the 24. Yes, with, all, with, all the, with all the propaganda uh, profits throwing out there, I think prof, prof is old enough to know, to remember Piran Bank. I'm uh, sure she remembers. Piram. I'm sure she also needs to get in Piram, yes. Yeah, but Piram, she, was it, was sure it a bank or it was a, it was a savings and loan? You know, it has to be, uh, what were they taking? Do, were they not a deposit-taking institution and all that? Were they okay. not running people's funds? You know, she, I'm sure she also has to go into what data bank does. She needs to go into what data bank, whichever way, whichever way. I don't think Ghanaians are looking for a president who led uh, a low middle income into uh, IMF to come back. What is what's what new what new thing is he coming with? So I think Prof will have to put some of these things into perspective. She shouldn't paint the picture as if we have a new person from the NDC stock coming. This is a former president. This is a former member of parliament. This is a former vice president who is making some promises. How authentic are those things? How practical are those things? This is a man who uh, supervised Doomso for four years. That collapsed small and medium scale uh, industries. So I think Prof needs to put these things into context and not make it seem as if it's business as usual. Come 2024, come 2024, the NDC would have done 16 years if we take out PNDC, and the MPP would have been finishing 16 years. Ghanaians need to hear better things. Ghanaians need to hear what is coming new. COVID and all those external shocks have shown us that in the time where everybody has to be on their own, every country needs to be on their own. What are we doing new? So if you have a bunch of people who say digitalization has nothing to do with the economy, we need to really look at these things. So you should put a conversation into context so all this problem. All right, so we're having uh, some uh, Zoom discussion with Lara too. Obviously, as you can see, she's in a vehicle trying to move into the studio, but doesn't want to miss out <laughs> on anything that Prof is going to say on the platform. So she's joining via Zoom before she gets here. Hello, um, Lara too. Hello. Okay, I think the, the movement is costing her a bit. So let's see if uh, um, Alara, to, you can you can rejoin. Uh, okay, it's it's not good at all. So let her rejoin and then she can. Doc, what I wanted to ask is that you're saying that she, um, you know, so the gov this government basically the point you're making is they made the business environment unfriendly. Yes. Is that what they did? Yes, I mean, um, you know, before they came to power, they, they told us or they told Ghanaians that when they come, they were going to reduce taxes. 
I remember very well, I was so kind, spare part dealers. You know, we're so happy, and I learned they even contributed to support uh, the then the candidate campaign. because he promised that he was going to reduce taxes. So they go and ask them if they are, um, they are still jubilating. You go to the port, the port, the port is empty because taxes are so high. You know, people are not able to import. Somebody made um, a remark that he imported Toyota Yaris and he paid a tax of about 64,000 Ghana cities as import tax. And then you ask yourself... Oh, wait, oh. Toyota Yaris? Yes. The tax is 64,000? Yes. That's what the person the paid? The person said he paid. You know, so you ask, if you add the cost of vehicle, you ask the, you, you pay, I mean, you, you, you add the, imp, I mean, the imports because uh, you are importing with the company, and then your profit, you realize that it's so high. So such a vehicle, the owner will find it so difficult to be able to even sell because at the end of the day, it's, the taxes are so high. You know, I mean, the prices are so high that ordinary Ghana will not be able to um, be able to purchase. Okay. Again, when you look at prices of um, items, before they came to power, they said what they were going to make sure that um, things are better off mm -hmm. than I mean, are better off at that time. I mean, as at that time compared to the time when they come to government. Before they came to government, for example, a bag of maize was going for 80 Ghana cities. Today, mm -hmm. as we are speaking, a bag of maize is going for 900 Ghana cities. Unemployment, as at that time, was, as I indicated earlier, on 8%. Today, we have unemployment as high as 14%. It's, I mean, CD to dollar, as at 2016, was um, 3.8%. Some places you have four cities to a dollar. To but it has been clear, which the government has been saying, that it's not a Ghana situation, it's a global challenge that we all have. It is, as at that time, there were a number of global challenges as well. You cannot, you know, during the, the, time. the issue is that they, yes, during Mahama's time, there were challenges. Not, it, it's not comparable to what we faced with COVID and Russia Ukraine war. See, COVID was a blessing to us then. A curse. Yes. When you look at the amount of money that we got during COVID time, I mean, that was enough to turn our economy around. You ask yourself, when you go to Togo, do they have inflation as high as 54%? When you go to Nigeria, you go to Cote d'Ivoire. I mean, these countries, didn't they suffer from COVID? What is the inflation rate over there? So honestly, it's, it, for me, I see it as um, mismanagement. People took advantage of the situation and they enriched themselves. You know, we, we, we had instances where um, uh, the, the company that, for example, operated at uh, airports, I've just forgotten the name of the company, they could not declare the amount of money that they, 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 they realized. Meanwhile, mm -mm. The time they gave that contract to a foreign company, we had Noguchi. That mm -hmm. could also even carry out that activity or um, the, 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 the mandate that was given to the company. But yet, they did not give that uh, contract to Noguchi. They rather decided to give it to the opponent. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say that COVID was the reason why we found ourselves where we are. Over and over again, a lot of discussion shows that oh, you're referring it is to just frontiers. frontiers, exactly. A lot of um, discussion shows that this country, we are where we are because of mismanagement, because governments have refused, even when people make suggestions as to how they can revamp the economy, you know, to them, they have refused. For example, cut down on expenditure, cut down on government size, cut down on some of the unnecessary flagship programs. But they are still doing it. You know, when you look at even 2023 budget um, that they just read, you realize that the amount of money that they even intend to spend is so huge. And to the extent that it's even more than a gen their um, revenue generation. At a time when we are saying that cut down on expenditure, 
you are not listening. Then they come back and like, oh, we only accuse them of doing the wrong thing without you know, giving solution. When you give solutions, they will not you know, take it. And that's why I'm saying that His Excellency John Dramani Mahama have said that it will take us a very long time for us to revive the economy if we go business as usual, if we want to do things the normal way, it will be very and difficult. And 24 hours is the solution. Is, yes, but because when you look at some of the loans that they borrowed, payments of the interest have been offloaded to other years. So yeah. as at now, we are not paying for the loans yeah. that you know, um, we've taken, which means, that, which means that later on, we would have huge amount of money to yeah. pay as interest on the loans that we have taken. And so if we cannot, you know, solve the situation by doing something out of the box, as I indicated, it will be very difficult for us to come out of the economic mess that we find ourselves. And that is why he sees 24-hour economy as the game changer. But, but we've had a lot of analysis and, and international observers and ratings that have clearly been so direct with us that our problem really is not that we don't have the money. Our problem is corruption. We had corruption during Muhammad's time. We had corruption. We have corruption today, which obviously we've seen the OSP struggling to explain himself even to us why he's losing cases in court and all that. So there is a bigger or more, a, more of a basic problem than just telling us that, well, we want to do this and that will give us more money or want to do that, that will give us more money. How about we want to reduce corruption like, uh, you know, to the minimum, maybe to zero percent, zero tolerance of corruption. Why can't we? I know in Kufo's days he had said that, well, corruption started from Adam. So it's like in Ghana we have just accepted that the thing, you know, it, it can't happen. It, it, corruption will be there. We just have to work and manage the situation. That's what we're doing. And in management, we are actually intensifying the acts of corruption in the country. We haven't heard any leader really speak so boldly about corruption, knowing how much we're losing to corruption annually on a yearly basis, how much we, uh, the Attorney General has been, uh, sorry, the uh, Auditor General has been accounting in his books and how much we're losing every day, you know, yearly. Nobody is really speaking to it. All we are doing is, well, we, we, uh, 24 hour. Someone says night economy. Someone says blue economy. But when we make the money, you spend the money and you don't give it to us as those who are entitled to the money that we are actually, you know, generating. You know, the NDC over the years have tried to or have fought corruption. Um, it was only in NDC governments that somebody who just desired, who just expressed an intention or an intent that this is what I would want to do, or not really to do, but I would love that I'm able to do. Mm. And the person was sacked for just expressing that, oh, if I get this amount, I'll quit. Oh, Victoria Hammer sagat. Yes. She was sacked just by an, 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 I mean, expressing an interest. We have Mama's own appointee being prosecuted when it was alleged that he was corrupt. But this government, what we are seeing is that there is some deliberate attempt to even protect appointees that have been labeled as corrupt. Now, when you look at the special prosecutor's um, office or the establishment of the office of the special prosecutor, I mean, when it first came up, a lot of Ghanaians uh, saw that was a good idea mm. because corruption was something that you know, we all frowned on because we are losing a lot of money as a result of corrupt act. But what have we seen in this government? We've seen a lot of their officials engaged in corruption, and it looks like the special prosecutor's office or the establishment of the office of the special prosecutor was just an establishment for political convenience to let Ghanaians feel that, oh, we want to tackle corruption. But what have we seen? This office or the office holder, so what it did was to appoint somebody who was very bitter with NDC, Mr. Martin Amidu. And 
their intention was that he'll go after NDC um, opponents in order to prove that indeed they are fighting corruption. When Mati Amido started investigating um, the PDSDO, you realize that that was when trouble started. Ken Foriata invited him to his, uh, to his house to talk about uh, something that had to do with uh, public, I mean, like official matter in the house, and he saw it as something which was not right. What we also saw is that a government that wanted to fight corruption, we expected that that office should have been provided with enough resources. Martin Amidu complained of lack of resources that frustrated his job. At the end of the day, Martin Amidu ma made a very profound statement that His Excellency Nanado Adam Kwakufuado was the what? The mother serpent of corruption because he saw that the office was just created for political convenience. When he tried to prosecute this current administration that's official or appointee of this, corrupt, I mean, of this current administration, we saw corruption fighting back. We have a typical example of uh, Domolovo also. When he touched, like the, they say, the, the, the tail of the lion, corruption fought him. When he talked about um, they paying some one million to a, a company, I've just forgotten the name of the company, and he felt that that payment was not right and they had to refund that money. That was when we saw corruption fighting uh, Domolovo. We have seen a number of um, these instances in, 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 in this um, government. The issue of La, uh, La Bianca, a scandal where there was a, um, an evidence of tax evasion and um, the office of the special prosecutor took up the case and investigated and found the company liable for not paying the rightful tax and that gave them advantage over other businesses. What did we see? We saw the court telling the special prosecutor that it was not his mandate to do that and now gave immunity for the woman in charge of the affair from being investigated. What have we seen also with the issue of Cecilia Dapa, that she also went to seek for an injunction to uh, immune her from being investigated. So I will say that we cannot just lump both political party and said and say that you know we've seen corruption in both political party as i said in ndc there were some massive attempt you know to make sure that people who were corrupt were dealt with i mean human institution you cannot find everyone who were in. corrupt or people who were getting ready to <laughs> Get involved in corrupt activities. <laughs> no, what I mean is that when NDC was in power, when allegation comes up, yeah. investigations were made. I remember very well, may his soul rest in peace, at Mills, when the issue of corruption at the port came up, he went to the port and he made them to make some investigation. Some individuals were transferred. You know, these were attempts to, or these were signs that. Which was not the best solution. No, transfer is not the best solution. Yeah, but what I mean is that, I mean, investigation, that just by the way. investigations were made yeah. and individuals that were, were found uh, culpable were punished. I gave an instance of uh, Vicky Hama, who just expressed interest. We have Abu, uh, uh, is it Abu Pele or so, Abuga Pele. Abuga Pele was prosecuted because they felt that, yes, we need to protect the public best. You know, surprisingly, at that time, the Anas principle really thrived, you know. And I remember very well His Excellency Nanado Dan Kwakufuado at that time as Rani Maid said that when he comes to power, he was going to use the Anas principle to expose corrupt officials and get them punished. Surprisingly, you ask yourself, where is Anas? Is Anas still in this country? Mm. Isn't it surprising for you? Yes. That for some time now we've not heard about Anas. He's around. What has happened? Oh. With all this corruption. He's actually around. With all this corruption going on, is Anas telling us that 
he has not heard or seen any. Or yeah, he's not able to investigate. All I'm just trying to say is that they've tried to clip the wings of Anas. Mm -hmm. They have managed <coughs> to make sure that they intimidate him. I remember very well when the issue of um, Nya Nya Pechi okay. came up. <coughs> you know, there was a strong fight back. Corruption was fighting back people who were trying to investigate corruption. And then we saw a journalist whose face was shown on live television. And that look, if you see him, beat him up. Today, his history, what has happened to this individual who tried to fight corruption? So I am saying that we cannot just lump the two political parties and say that uh, both parties somehow have been corrupt over the years. Yes, they are human institutions, but one party made a lot of effort. Surprisingly, we have seen this current government, even His Excellency Nanando Dankwa Kufuado, sometimes defending, you know, a uh, corrupt gov government official. And he's been given <coughs> a very good name as what? Uh, a clearing agent because he clears anybody that, you know, is being accused of um, corruption. Well, you know, Cecilia Dapa, when the issue came up and Cecilia Dapa wrote, to his excellency, I mean, his excellency, that she was, you know, resigning in order to make herself available for investigation. The, the response that came from Nanado Dankwa Kufado suggested that Cecilia Dapa will come out as victorious because he probably know her as somebody who is not corrupt. But you ask yourself, where did she get that amount of money? Where did she get it? We all know the salary of our ministers, even the sitting allowances. It's, it's, it's not anything um, hidden. It's a private, I mean, public, a public knowledge, knowledge <coughs> you know. And we, like you said, when they even did search, you have envelopes that contain money that were far more than certain allowance. That shows that there were some attempts that she, she, she accepted some monies that were unlawful. So it's just to say that, look, if you are saying we are talking about corruption, you cannot compare NDC and MPP. There are several attempts. Mm. You have the PPA uh, um, uh, scandal. We have um, Frempon Boati, who, <coughs> uh, <coughs> Professor Frempon Boati's report that shows government officials involved in Galamse and thwarting the effort of fighting this minute. When the Attorney General went to um, handle the case, he rubbished it and said there was no enough evidence. Hey, why? The water bodies are evident. Our water bodies are muddied. Our environment is destroyed. The forest is gone. Cocoa farmers are crying on a daily basis that, you know, they wake up in the morning and their farms are being destroyed. Yet, we have an Attorney General who said, what? Uh, uh, Professor Frempon Boatin's report or evidence wasn't evidential enough to prosecute anybody. So you could see that in this current government, there isn't much to actually fight corruption. They are just, you know, pretending that they are fighting corruption. But we have seen over the years that there is really no deliberate attempt. Now, um, the <coughs> current uh, <coughs> special prosecutor is even their own. And look how frustrated he is. And he has made a very dumb remark. That what? We are, there is a looming doom. Mm -hmm. With what is happening? There is a looming doom. And you can see that he actually, from his, his, his um, submission, there is that edge to even resign. He said, should I resign? But no, I will not because... For me, I have told myself that if I, I mean, I want to do something, I want to do it to the end. But you could say that he's already frustrated. Yeah. And if he has his own will, again, he will again, resign. Who's giving him um, support, so the story says that. Yeah. Former Auditor General Daniel Yao Damalevo <coughs> is urging the special prosecutor, Kisia Jabin, to remain resolute in his fight against corruption. This follows some comments made by Mr. Jabin during the press conference. Yeah, that was uh, uh, last week. While addressing journalists, the special prosecutor uh, accused the judiciary of exhibiting some disregard of his office power through the hasty dismissiveness of its cases. Mr. Jabin warned the country's risk losing fight against corruption should the office 
fail to meet uh, the set goals. Now, uh, as I said, I was sounding as, as I said, I was sounding like a prophet of doom, but there is doom looming ahead of, of us. Uh, that that very soon the murderer will will boldly walk to uh, to seek an injunction. Should I feel frustrated and resign? I took an oath, and my life uh, and in my life when I take an oath, da 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 da. da. Well, you, you heard all that. Yeah. But speaking in an interview with Joy FM, Mr. Dumalevo urged the Office of the Special Prosecutor to collaborate more with other agencies, including civil society organizations in the fight against corruption. And he explained that the collaboration with people or getting assistance from institutions will not hinder his work as a special prosecutor. Bring civil society people on board. Um, form partnerships. People think that when you link up or collaborate with other people, it means you are no more independent. I disagree. I don't think that is meaning of independence. You can still collaborate with the people and do your work as expected of you, he added. He further urged the special prosecutor not to resign or give up his fight against on corruption since justice will always prevail. As for the resigning or giving up, I will urge him that he should not do that. He should continue fighting. At the end of the day, right will prevail against wrong. Course. In his case, rights prevailed against Rome, wrong, but it was too late. It was too late. Yes, <laughs> it was too late. You know. So I will say it's it's we are it's it's really a very worrying trend that we are seeing uh, currently in this country, um, because corruption. I mean, it's just a, a non-starter. You know, corruption is an act that can lead into something else. When government officials are corrupt, what happens is that they deny people even the basic needs right. of life. And right. L let me, let me, I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. let me just uh, take a quick break. Um, I'm, I'm told, uh, Lara too is back online, right? She, she's really struggling to get here, but she is, um, you know, running, oh, I'm told she's in. All right, let me just take a quick break. And when we come back, we will get into talking about the MPP a bit, uh, or maybe wrap up with this one and then take, talk about MPPs, um, you know, just ended primaries. We'll be back shortly. Pascal is showing his boss the efficient new technology they've installed. She is pleased. But now she's asking, why is that still there? Pascal explains that he hired a security goat to protect the data shed. The boss is not so pleased anymore. If you haven't upgraded to cloud storage yet, it's time to get business done better with MTN Business. Good afternoon, Mr. Ampedu. Good afternoon, Mr. Sam. How is business doing? My business is collapsing. Why is your business collapsing? I sold my products and services to my clients on credit, and my debtors are not paying their debts. Have you heard of Rosic Consult Limited, a debt recovery company operating in all the 16 regions of Ghana? Not at all. Mr. Ampedu, all you need to do is to contact them on their customer service line. They do all that. Ah. <laughs> I recommend Rossi Consult Limited, a debt recovery company to financial institutions, businessmen and businesswomen, other companies, and also individuals. Rossi Consult has 98.4% debt recovery rate. We have professional debt recovery managers. You are assured of swift debt recovery. No recovery, no commission. For Rossi Consult Limited, no more write-offs. And we pre-finance the recovery ourselves. We are back, bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Betway starts strong with your front two, with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm a food man. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. As you might see. 
What if the answer to powering and running a clean, efficient and sustainable business now lies within your reach? What would you do? All you have to do is reach out to the AGI Energy Service Center. We provide tailor-made energy saving solutions to businesses. We provide you with solar feasibility studies, energy audits, energy efficiency trainings and financial advisory services. Visit agiesc.com for more information or call us on 0507-977-902. AGIESC, Sustainable Energy for Profitability, an initiative of the Association of Ghana Industries in partnership with the German Development Corporation, implemented by GIZ. Discover the perfect blend of quality, modern elegance and affordability with Kingdom Home Real Estate. At Kingdom Home Real Estate, we cater to both local and international clients offering exceptional housing options in Ebri and Ekropong. Our properties are conveniently located, providing a tranquil atmosphere, top-notch security and essential amenities such as electricity, water and backup generators. Our strategic locations offer easy access to popular tourist destinations all within a 30-minute drive from Accra. Visit us in Ekropong right after the latter junction or in Ebri near the Ebri Girls Senior High School. Alternatively, you can reach us Kingdom Home Real Estate, where your dream home becomes a reality. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200-535-515 lifts and elevators the elevator people ready for something refreshing and great tasting for your kids enjoyment Angel Cola. for your graduation enjoyment Angel Cola. beach hangout Angel Cola. For all your refreshing moments. Angel Cola! For your parties, get togethers, events, and celebrations, enjoy a chilled bottle of Angel Cola. Radio Grandma, today is your day. Over to you. Thank you. Enjoyment Cola. Angel Cola! The Enjoyment Cola. Enjoy all your moments and fun time with Angel Cola. This advert is FDA approved. Over 18 years in business, Appointed Time Printing Limited has delivered quality service to some of Ghana's well-known brands. With our equipment capacity, we are able to deliver 1,500 pieces of polo and t-shirts in one hour. This is only possible with us. For retailers and wholesalers, we offer for sale high-quality polo shirts and t-shirts in different colors at affordable prices. We have a one-stop shop for all creative designs and billboards, 3D signages, flexi banners, car branding, stickers and posters. Locate us at the old GNTC building near Swansea Shopping Arcade, Accra. Contact us on 0501-454165, 0501-454167. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Appointed Time GH, Appointed Time Printing Limited, our printing is a 
For over 20 years of serving the world with herbal and alternative medicine, we've been successful in treating complicated medical conditions with a perfect combination of herbal and alternative methods of treatment, like homeopathy, naturopathy, reflexology, and many more. We deliver excellent and effective service to people from all walks of life through scientific and traditional means. We have a well-equipped laboratory with advanced diagnostic and treatment devices to help detect your illness so we know the right medication to be given at Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital. We are proud manufacturers of our own herbal medication. Our zeal and passion to save lives with our patients at heart and outstanding achievements since 1996 has won us several awards. That is why we say, Go Herbal, Go Amen. We are located everywhere in all the regions. Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital. Allahu Shafi. God is the healer. <laughs> Ghana cities. One of our daily lucky winners. Dial star 946 hash to play now. Or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com. Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority. Yeah, welcome back to Good Morning Ghana. We're still uh, on the platform with uh, 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 Professor Benedicta Yaira Fosumensa, who is a member of the NDC. And uh, also, uh, I have Lara Tumusa Saka, who's joined me in the studio as well. Um, uh, we'll introduce her later. But for now, uh, let me uh, let you know that uh, Game Park Game is on and it says, I remember who's got the Mullah got the power and the new West Lottery game is on. And it draws on Adum uh, TV at 9 a.m., uh, 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. daily. So pick your phones and tablets and computers and download the Game Park Game app on your Play Store. Uh, or you can also play on your website. It's www.gamepark.com games.com or dial star nine four six hash on all networks and then choose from the numbers from zero to nine and then you want to make some uh, money we we'll call it the mula in the game park games so nobody beats our odds in ghana it says and more mula more power now also Curl charcoal toothpaste. Remember, I told you about the curl kits, but we have the curl charcoal toothpaste as general for all. Children can use that one as well. And so um, uh, it's, it's a pounded uh, pentacle of plantain. That's a body tree, the head <laughs> of the plantain mixed with charcoal. And then also uh, it has essential medical properties and, and helps remove toxins from the body. It's natural ab ab absorb absorptive uh, property charcoal helps remove bacteria and produce bad breath, uh, help remove the bad breath in your mouth and hands, giving you the fresh breath. So kelp charcoal toothpaste has been formulated and produced under the strict hygienic, hygienic conditions with necessary production protocols uh, and has been approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. Uh, you want to contact them. Uh, for more, it says kale charcoal toothpaste for uh, 
white teeth and fresh breath all day. This is also another quality product from Samara Company. Kel charcoal toothpaste, happy smile. And also, Angel Cola comes with some more uh, flavors. It says it has angel orange, angel mango, angel peach, and angel lime. And uh, it produces vitality and maintain the fluid in normal balance. A normal balance, refreshing and invigorating and exciting. Produced by Adonko Salt Drinks Beverages. And it's recommended for all, including children. Contact them on 244 832286 or 050-7878668. Terms and conditions apply. And also, Kingdom Real Estate is also here giving you some providing quality but affordable housing facilities for sale. Our facilities are located at the Syrian environment uh, of Ikapim and Ibri with the best uh, weather condition. And we're also 30 minutes drive from Accra and provide more than touch of comfort. We provide a standard security service plus CCTV cameras as well, standby generators, constant water supply and electricity. Right, We're also surrounded uh, by beautiful tourist sites such as Ibri Botanical Gardens and Booty Falls, Safari Valley Resort, etc. 70% payments up front and then the 30% will, will spread over two years. Look at them, Ibri, uh, close to Ibri Girls and a coupon right after the latter junction. Call them on 0559-6761-144 or 0555-621611. Now, the Makers Electronics Company Limited is also uh, telling you that the promo is still on 67%. I mean, you won't get this anyway. 67% discounts on selected appliances. And they include Samsung, LG, Moved, NASCO, T TCL, Media, and Toshiba. Now, with numerous awards, including uh, Outstanding Customer Service Company of the Year, Responsible Electri Electronics Company of the Year, it means that you have to get your stuff from them, okay? This Christmas, all your products must be gotten from them. And uh, visit their showrooms at Taifa Burkina Highway, Amasamanzango Junction, Oyarifa Tema, Boga Junction, Kaswa Market, uh, Ashaman Vaku Flat, Kumasi Akinema Kokobing, and also Takradi Ifikuma number nine market. Call them on 055 222 or 055 222 uh, The Megas Electronics says that it is large and in charge with quality, affordable home appliances, consumer electronics. Terms and conditions, obviously, apply. Get some for this Christmas season. But, Lara, right, so good morning. Good morning, Nani. Thank you for coming. Sorry for being late. Even though <laughs> it's not, it's not my. Oh my goodness! Home, I sorry know. Sorry for being late. I know. Because I represent the. This one, I should, I, know you've I, should, missed I should even be the one apologizing to you. Well, if you say <laughs> so. Sorry for putting you through this. If you say so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, if I say so, I mean. You, you made you made uh, Prof uh, commit murder with propaganda this morning. Oh, you committed murder. Interestingly, you were quiet. I could count the number of times you interjected. I don't know whether what you're saying was amazing you or what you're saying. I was you liking it. You liked it. I know, <laughs> Doc, I know Prof has really missed me, but uh, she's, she's really committed. How is Dr. Baumia? Dr. Baumia is doing, is doing great. I hear yesterday he was in church, Presby Church. Oh, but Dr. Baumia goes they to... They were doing some occasions when they invited oh, him. Of course, if a church um, full of uh, Ghanaians, a Ghanaian church for that matter... He's holding a program and he <laughs> the vice president of the republic. I don't think there's anything wrong with him. <laughs> Did you go with him? Did you no. go with him? Why? You know, we, we had elections on uh, Saturday. The more reason why, I was surprised when I saw, that, you know how it's like, you've gone through elections, you're feeling, you've won, you're feeling all energetic. This one calls you, say, oh, I can make it. Then you wake up Monday morning and realize. You're broken down. Yeah, <laughs> it's a reality. That's a good morning, Cozy. You know, that's, that's, that's what happened. So, I mean, these things happen. You may be deployed, and uh, the next morning you wake up and realize, no, you just can't make it. I mean, like someone who said, I congratulate you. Yeah, 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 won't pay me. When it comes to That's why when we are going to sleep, we leave it to our maker. Because it's like uh, dying and waking up. So, these things do happen. It's how, it's how we her, manage Her principalities them. and powers were a lot. <laughs> so we have to. By the end of the day, I mean, she came out victorious, and that shows hard work. She's, she's really persevering. She said she did vote buying. She did what? Who vote said she buying. did vote buying? They said. It's all Who? over social media. Who you, said you, that? you didn't see. You haven't seen some of it. 
Oh, and they have uh, evidence to that. And and and, Honey, and you and know when it comes to elections, I was there. I was I was in Adenta. I was a polling so you got agent at Centre B. So you got two thousand. Come again. Also got it. I was, got, I was you got a polling total, agent 4, for her. The work that was put into this uh, campaign wasn't just that. We went in as the underdog. We 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 reached out to everyone. We reached out to every delegate. You know. So I mean, the fact that she wasn't. Uh, doing uh, media. I remember when she started, the first thing that was told her by her opponents in a live video was, who was Sikabra? So how can the person who is Sika be the one paying off? But I mean, you see, all these things that happen. Oh, I can the speak, opponents actually I can, said that. Oh, yes. I can speak to these because I was part of the process from day one, from the decision making till it, uh, she was declared uh, victorious. But we need to manage these narratives. Because at the end of the day, we need to go forward as MPP. The internal <clears throat> uh, politicking is over. People have been declared winners. But the ultimate uh, contest is between us and our other uh, competitors in the race. We don't even know those. At least we know uh, our competitors in the NDC as uh, a certain member of parliament. And when you study the dynamics of Adentan, I always say there are no nonsense people. If you come and you don't prove yourself, you're out. They are not stuck to any political party per se. So it's a whole different ballgame. We need everyone on board. People will say a lot of things. People will come out with a lot of reasons why they couldn't make it. But at the end of the day, it's one person that's going to uh, come out victorious, you know. Well, congratulations to all the candidates that uh, made it. So, congratulations so to those who also made it to the end. I mean, the decision to put up yourself for an elective position, it's, it's a daring one. So for them to have taken the decision out of service to the party, to go all the way out, they need to be applauded too. By the end of the day, we need one face on the ballot paper. And those are the ones that have been uh, declared by the EC. We all need to rally around um, the elephants, rally around the uh, party, rally around the MPP, and make sure that all those seats that the NDC took for us, based on some of these internal things, we, we reclaim those seats and mm. uh, make it better for so, uh, Dr. Baumia, Dr. Dr. Baumia, let me capture this. Uh, I think two things I will, I will read from your leaders. Uh, we've heard from Nana Adedankwa Kufuado. Um, let me just try and capture his, um, his statements for the party. He says that I expect, sorry. Um, so Nana says that I extend warm greetings, warm congratulations to national, regional, constituency, electoral area, polling stations, officers, and indeed the entire membership of the New Patriotic Party for the conduct of free, fair, transparent, and credible parliamentary primaries in orphan constituencies during the weekend of Saturday, 2nd December 2023. This completes the uh, penultimate stage of the party's preparations for the all-important contest on 7 December 2024. And we have once again expressed our deep attachment and commitment to the democratic values which have been a hallmark of our party's great tradition. Despite the challenges uh, confronting the nation, we have demonstrated our, sorry, with our record in office that we, the party, uh, that we are the party that can bring progress and prosperity to all parts of the country. So I urge all winners to be magnanimous in their celebrations and work hard to bring on board those who were not successful. Thoughts through this, we shall create the united formidable front that uh, under the leadership of our new worthy presidential candidate Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia will enable us to go into the difficult 2024 elections with quiet confidence and with the help of Almighty God break the eight with which is a fervent wish of all members and indeed of well-meaning 
Ghanaians, and that's a message from the president, Nanade Dankwa Kufuadu. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has congratulated the parliamentary candidates of the new Patriotic Party MPP across the country and urged them to adopt humility and grace to also win the 2024 polls. Delegates of the MPP across the country went to the polls Saturday, uh, December 2, 2023, sorry, to vote the, their parliamentary candidates uh, in orphan constituencies. Now, this election were supervised by Electoral Commission Ninote. Uh, Ninote and Jefferson Saki won the primaries in Klote Kole and Abdekuma Central Constituencies, respectively. Former Commissioner of the Customs Division at the Ghana Revenue Authority, Colonel uh, Kojudamwa, won the <laughs> German South Constituency. Chief Executive of the National Youth Authority, NYA, Paris Hajide, won the Esu German Parliamentary. Barbara Otin Jesse won the Prestia Huni Valley Parliamentary. Uh, while Abdul Manaf Nani Ajay Soa won the Odududu uh, primary. I think I was happy for him. I think. Dr. Baumia's statement issued Saturday said that I commend the new Patriotic Party, National Leadership of the Party, for supervising very peaceful and transparent primaries in the orphan constituencies. The fact that Akosia and her boss both won the updates, mm -hmm. that's very interesting, right? <laughs> So uh, the vice president also expressed his gratitude to aspirants who must adopt humility and grace, uh, who, must, who sh could not make uh, it for their determination uh, and courage, adding that the party is indebted to you. But the other side of that is that the Office of the Special Prosecutor, OSP, has declared six people wanted for their alleged involvement in corruption and corruption-related offenses during the parliamentary elections organized by the governing <coughs> New Patriotic Party, the NPP, over the weekend held its parliamentary elections in orphan constituencies. Uh, issues of vote buying were rife as delegates flaunted monies received from aspirants on camera. The OSP has thus commenced investigations into the incidents. The OSP urged the general public to contribute to the efforts by uh, presenting any information that may assist in its investigation. That's also from the frustrated office of the OSP <laughs> to the new Patriotic Party, actually. I don't know how she, he's going to go through. If he can do this one, oh, we'll clap for him. So, that was it. Yes, honey. Congratulations again. Thank you. I mean, it's a... Uh uh, congratulations that has to go to the whole of the MPP, from the national chairman, general secretary, to the various committees, all the executives that went around uh, monitoring. I mean, we've shown that uh, violence is not our turf. We are a democratic party, and we stand by our um, motto, development in freedom. It was as stated by all, I don't think, with all that, I mean, people say a lot of things in defeat. People say a lot of things in victory. But on the whole, all the constituencies were done. I'm sure by, for Adenta, by 259, we had done the declaration. Other places did it earlier. But I don't think any constituency went beyond 4 p.m. Oh. That shows. And the EC needs to be commended too. They did it. The police also did very well. I mean, you know, when we are running our internal elections, we leave security to those that are professionals to handle security. And we leave the electoral process for the EC who are uh, mandated to do that. So congratulations to everybody. Every MPP member must be proud that we did this. And uh, we should continue with it. We have uh, the sitting MPs coming on, I mean, the tentative data start. 20th of January. So we hope and pray we run it the same way we've done for this one. And for me, a bigger congratulations goes to the women who faced the competition and came out victorious. That should tell us. And I also pray the 20 in there are <coughs> able to manage and retain their seats because, I mean, you can have. Um, one-sided majority in terms of her gender. So for s some of us, we push for competent, uh, capable women. And all the women that showed up have proven that they are capable and up to the task. So it's hard work, 
that is not that the worker started. What we're doing was just a face. But what, what do you make of what we showed on TV? A lot of them, the, the persons who were flaunting monies that they got. I mean, this Saturday, honey, the people made money. Oh. Honey, the some, MPP, some couldn't close their backs. I mean, honey, if we were, <laughs> we were discussing, I don't think you saw any letter anywhere like we saw with our compatriots, with anybody saying they were giving money to anybody. These things, let's be realistic. People come from far. Some give TNT. Some give food because of the time. Because people have to leave their houses. I had to leave the house like 5.30 in order to get there on time. No breakfast, nothing. So candidates come in, other people, party people come in to do those things. But to the extent of people going out to flaunt money, I think it's something that the MPP doesn't endorse and must be discouraged. Fortunately, the special prosecutor who is... Uh, who uh, himself said, he said, no, Barney, if you come into an office and you tout yourself as the spirit and conscience of the nation, you must be ready to raise the storm. It's corruption you are going to fight with all due respect. It's not ice cream you're going to sell. So if you get into an office, you need to really look at how you manage your stakeholders. You know, so, but if you go and tout yourself as the spirit and conscience of the nation, I mean, people have that attitude of watching you prove that you are really the spirit and conscience of, but other institutions are involved in this fight against corruption. How have you collaborated with them? How have you engaged them? How have you managed your stakeholders? The judiciary is a major stakeholder. How have you engaged them? I may not know, but I think that is where he should be looking at. I mean, setting up the office of the special prosecutor is a big boost to our fight against corruption, and it shouldn't be uh, toyed with. Everybody, all hands need to be on deck. But it's the responsibility of the person in charge to also draw people in. Collaboration yeah, but, but is but the you know, key. Watching, watching you the know. OSB yes. from, from a distance, yes. maybe uh, in terms of communication, yes. I see a man who has so much in him, mm -hmm. but is unable to voice out, mm -hmm. but for the little he's giving us. Mm -hmm. So I'm so sure that with what you're saying, the OSP mm -hmm. knows more than you think. Yes, yeah, exactly. And he's experiencing he more, more, than, than, with what more he's, than he's told us. But, what, what but he's, he's said, unable to say everything. You know? He, he's only told us a little because people are already criticizing his office that why are you not able to prosecute any case? Honey, why are you losing all the cases in court? Apart from the four nothing. cases he's talking about, I know that on a daily basis they write letters to institutions. People go to the OSP's office uh, every day to complain about procurement processes and all that. Last week I was sitting in an office and I don't have the... Uh, authority to give details of this office. But I was sitting with uh, someone in charge of an agency, and a letter from the OSP's office came in. Apparently, someone had gone to complain about procurement process, and they had written. Then and there, they responded. So apart from the, co the uh, cases that he's complaining, the four cases he's complaining about, and the judicial service, I think uh, judicial service staff have also come out with it, that yeah. she used the processes to do. Because I think in one of the cases, even the filing process had a challenge, you know. So I think he needs to also bring in his stakeholders, manage it properly. As for uh, corruption and frustration, nobody, nobody uh, did it. And I remember, even when he started the, one of the cases, his predecessor kept cautioning him with write-ups, you know. You can't, you can't be in an office and leave your predecessor uh, out in these things, you know, and uh, Prof was saying that we went to pick someone. I didn't know that Prof knew what was in Nana Dodankwa Akufuado's head. She could interpret what his intentions yeah, are. Why would we want to fight corruption by going to take someone who is bitter with NDC? The man is an accomplished lawyer. He was fit for the job. He was given the job. So for you to demean his capabilities like that, I think that is unfortunate. No, for you I to say that <laughs> we appointed someone who is better with the NDC and we thought that he was going to go after the NDC. Who, how many, uh, the cases that the scary special prosecutors uh, pursued, most of them are within government. You know, and he's doing it. But at the end of the day, nobody has control over the courts. 
It's what you take to them. It's what the judges done. He's even he had calls to petition against certain lawyers and all that. But the bottom line is, how has the stakeholder management been? How has he engaged his collaborators? I think he needs to look at it from that point. Because if you are having the spirit and conscience of the nation uh, coming out like this, then there's, there's more to it, like you said. But I don't think it should be uh, discouraged. There are people who already had their mandates before the special prosecutor, but nobody denies the fact that the setting up of this office has been a big boost to the fight against corruption. But it's not only about talking about fighting corruption. Sometimes the measures you put in place, the acts, uh, the laws you put in place are the ones that uh, do it. People go there every day. I mean, we've had a lot of legislations. We've even had to uh, amend the Criminal Offences Act, you know, acts, uh, things that were uh, just considered as just mere felony are now uh, subject to criminal charges and all that. There's the Witness Protection Act that is there. I mean, at least the person should know that when I go in there to give information, I know that I'm protected. But this fight is a collective one. But if you don't encourage people that your doors are open, they should come on board. They'll also be skeptical and do what they, they have to do. So it's, it's uh, everybody's call. But it's not, you know, if you, if you watch yeah. the new crop of faces that have emerged, yes, please. as far as the primaries uh, of the orphan consensus are concerned, yeah. obviously the party is, is giving a, uh, an opportunity to new generation. New faces are really coming in, most of them quite young, you know. Yes, yeah, fa fairly, <coughs> fairly young, younger, right. Yes. So it's rather disturbing to see uh, them engaged in activities of this nature were alleged for the records. I will, I will you know, be glad to it's, see it's the It's rather end disturbing because you, you haven't even taken the office of any you know, political mm. position yet and you are involved in this. And if you check the uh, you know, um, uh, budgets or calculations that we've been doing about what an MP sorry, what an aspirant need to even run campaign, you see that, I mean, if I check your salary, uh, Lara, to as you are sitting here right now, and knowing you as Lara, to... Do you know my salary? Well, I, I, I know. I have you know an idea. Salary. I have okay. an idea, you know. Okay. I would think that you will need some international support aid, which you can use... I'm that broke, huh? Oh, no, not that broke, mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but seriously... That is to say that you need a lot of money. And no, we are seeing I mean, that people have gotten all this money when you, and they are now even giving, you know, so much for when, transport. When you put it in that context, then we may never have a solution to the monetization of our politics. This is something we've been discussing um, over the years. Right. I saw people needing uh, support. I have seen individuals who believe in the person's capabilities and have come all out to um, support them. So when it comes to fundraising, That's true. I mean, if you limit it to the person's earnings, earnings, you may get it wrong. Because there are people who believe in the the capabilities of an individual and say, we want to sponsor you. Even here, that too. People will go out of their communities looking for people they think yeah, but will you, yeah, but, represent but, but, but them you know well that people, yes, people are yes. supported. I mean, the candidates are supported. All of them are supported. But as we sit here, we don't know the source of any candidate support. Do we, know again. The Do we know the source? No, it's because we don't have those measures in place. You remember we, so also, the we also had that conversation on a campaign financing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I remember, I don't know if it was President Kufo's time. It was really high on the agenda, financing political parties so we can track how much political. So I even remember some political parties were giving pickups to augment their campaign. Uh, I've forgotten the year, but this conversation has gone, but it's gone. Because if you are not giving the person funding, or you are not regulating the person's funding, how do you hold them accountable for what they are spending? You know, I mean, and it's both 
uh, all parties, all candidates who go in to do it. It's not limited to a party in power or a party in opposition yeah. or uh, a party that's not really uh, in the contest. So it's up to us to have this conversation. These videos that we're showing, you saw them in constituencies. Was any of them able to tell you that this person gave me this oh, some Oh, some were showing envelopes. envelopes no, that's what I'm candidate. saying. They, 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 in fact, these ones had yes. the envelopes with their candidate pictures and names oh, really? printed. Yes, I mean, we showed one video like that. I'm, I'm sure we, they can show it again. But the candidate's name was printed on the I envelope. See. So, so that when see, you receive, you know no, that. No, but I don't know. <laughs> well, if you look at the envelope, how much do you uh, think will be in it? We have different currencies. So <laughs> someone could put one CD and make it look very fluffy. Someone could put 200 CDs and it looks pretty uh, flat. But if you're looking at the weight of the envelope, but the bottom the, line the, is... The, least, the, least, the uh, bottom line the is the new I patriotic party CDs. doesn't endorse these things. The special prosecutor has taken it up as he has to. Let's see how it goes. I mean, if they are comfortable... But there's a party not? not having any plan of taking it uh, up. Taking what up? That up as well for the party itself to investigate if party, anybody was engaged in vote buying. The party doesn't encourage those things. You remember during the uh, presidential primaries, you had people shouting and saying all kinds of things. The only thing the party gave, and every political party, I don't know about the NDC, if they don't pay uh, dues, but we've even strengthened our dues payment. So the party has some form of uh, funding that comes in, and they can do minimal. So remember during the flag bearership uh, contest, the party gave, but these were internal elections. It was constituency by constituency. You don't need to go for that. If delegates, some give food, some give transportation, but we need to look at it. Are we going to put a cap on uh, how much people spend? I was talking to um, someone who was mentioning about how the US kept it. If you're a campaign financier, you can't give a certain amount of money and all that. So are we going to look at it, mm. you know, as in regulating some of these things? But until we do that, we'll just keep speculating and uh, opponents leveling allegations against each other. And it'll be that circus. And everything that starts builds up, you know. It started from food. It started from giving people water. I came to giving people TNT. How, when are we going to all come together and cap it? I don't think it's a an MP, because the MPP definitely doesn't uh, endorse these things. All right, let, let, me, let me come to you, though. Okay. I, I saw in one constituency, uh, after the voting and everything, there was food bazaar. Oh, you think Doc has the moral, <laughs> moral right to talk so, about this when they were spraying money um, at the earth? And they were spraying money. Oh, you didn't see the woman on the car spraying cash? She was punished. she was raining, let it yeah, rain. Yeah, she was punished. The she was what? Punished her. Um, she was what? Um, she was punished, punished by the party. She was they suspended. Do <laughs> uh, no, prof, unless I'm, 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 I'm wrong. I'm surprised. Prof, Laura, prof will say Laura. she's forgotten the name. Ah. Don't worry. That's what she's been saying the whole morning. Is that she's forgotten the name, or she's forgotten the institution, or she's forgotten the date? That has been the <laughs> Laura, too. trend this morning. I, 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 prof, I, I, morning. I really don't know where from this excitement. <laughs> I'm happy and, to see you. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure probably she enjoys some of the cards during the. <laughs> The, the election. I'm um, just wondering how you much know, she Are you leveling an allegation? Special prosecutor is speaking she, people. She I beg you, regardless. Probably she thing. was in charge of the, the booty. giving oh, us the polling agent. Booty. <laughs> I was a polling agent. Yeah, but just to put it on record that mm. um, I'm saying that um, Nanado Dankwa appointed somebody who wasn't so happy with the. Yeah, agency. that's what you said meant that I was undermining Martin Amidu. That's not the point, but. Looking at what have, I mean, what transpired throughout uh, Martin Amidu's um, era shows that they were not committed to fighting corruption, but they just appointed him for political convenience with the hope that he will come and uh, prosecute their opponents. But when he is, he now, you know, pointed the gun at them, mm. that was when they started fighting him, and out of frustration, he has to resign. I'm surprised. Um, my good friend Laura too is trying to, you know, present the case nicely than it is. I think this issue of monetization of our politics needs to be condemned by all. And if we want to fight corruption, that is the beginning of corruption. Over the weekend, we've seen 
um, people giving out as much as uh, uh, 5,000 and 2,000, and you just mm -hmm. wonder if you are giving out 5,000, is it for, are the people coming from Ukraine or from Russia to come and vote? How can you describe um, 3,000, 4,000 uh, in as, an transport. as transport? How many of us spend 2,000 cities on lunch? Because the event is just a day. So how can you give somebody 3,000, 4,000 and tell the, I mean, come and, 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 and the by their claims, that. I was just thinking, if I am within, say, Ododododio constituency, how many kilometers do I have to travel to come to the voting site? Exactly. To vote? Exactly. And I need, say, 3,000 as transport. I mean, I That's think this act should be condemned by all. And if we want to go, I mean, into this tangent, what will happen is that uh, people who have money are the people that will find in parliament. So it means that a good candidate or somebody who is very good that can, you know, fight for the cause of the country and does not have money would not find his or herself um, there. And this also means that we will find corrupt officials finding their way into parliament because they have the money to bribe their way into that. I think this act should be condemned, and I am so happy that uh, special prosecutors have started uh, some investigation. But sadly enough, you know, sometimes it's as if you can just um, predict what will happen uh, from the beginning, because already we are seeing trend. You know, all the four cases he, he, he investigated have been rubbish, and out of frustration, he is now saying that um, he feels as if resigning, but he will not. So I'm just hoping that um, we would go into the bottom of this to at least serve as deterrent uh, for subsequent election because this is the beginning of corruption. Where did these people get the kind of money uh, they're having? Surprisingly, you know, it's like the president boys have all won. Probably they pay I was actually going amount. to ask you, you know, what you make of the faces that are coming it, up. It, if, it, if, it's if, so if it shares, it, it sends shivers down your spine. We have the likes of Samia Uku coming in, exactly. uh, Dr. Okoboy, uh, Eugene Ahin, Akusia Menu, Pius Hajide. Uh, we have Amadou who dropped from uh, Ikrapim North uh, yes. down to uh, Okankwe. And uh, I mean, the likes of the faces that are, it, it's interesting. I'm actually liking the new faces I'm seeing and is, is going panicking. to bring new dynamics really to, to the, the whole political activity. Samia Oku, in, interestingly, uh, went unopposed. Yeah. And I can understand probably, even though I'm not a member I of mean, the it's so MPP, obvious. Yes. yes, it's so obvious. Yes. Because for even a city uh, member of MP to leave her constituency and now move to another constituency. It's like, as I for mean, you, when you are coming, we're giving you the chance. Just come. Oh, yes, but, uh, but you see, as I said... That's why I said dog doesn't have the moral right. They have, what, they have what, one in their what house. What moral right mm -hmm. is she talking about? They have, see, they have one in their house. You, you had about 20 unopposed, right? Come again. You had about 20, 20 of them, yes. How many unopposed persons? I haven't uh, taken account of that. During NDC's primary, we didn't see people giving those fat, fat, fat envelopes. You saw, this, they, were, they are always saying that, where is the evidence? The evidence are there. I mean, to the extent that a delegate, the money couldn't even enter her back. And this is a country that we are... Were they, were they not IMF. being just overly dramatic? We've gone to <laughs> IMF to borrow Were the delegates money. not being dramatic? Is that right? The person showed you the money. So did you see money. the money? Well, yes, yes, they, they showed it on the cameras they, they showed an envelope. They showed the money. Yes, but there some, some opened, the opened the You saw the, the cash. Money. Yes. yes. And you were able they to count on the screen. Look at Laura. No, I'm just asking. What is she? No, she no, that's, she what, that's, she that's what I'm saying. The OSP has no, no, no. taken it up. Do Let's all make sure that it goes to It's not something that anybody encourages. Don't let it break. No, no, no. let us... You know, Pretend for some that, reason, oh, I, just, maybe it I, was I, five I think that, no, no, no. I think that no, even the delegates don't know that some of these acts that looks it like some too. of these acts that looks like uh, vote buying is wrong. So when we go to them with the cameras and ask them, they willingly show. Yeah, they don't. They don't even. And some even boldly come speak on camera and tell you that. Well, if they don't, I heard over the weekend. If they don't give us the money, we are not voting. Yeah, it's a very dangerous. You know, trend. If we 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 decide to go there, you saw what happened in in um, Asenov, where MPP people were like dishing out money just to buy votes 
The question is, there's nothing like free lunch. There's nothing like uh, for the mm. Christmas. Mm. So if these people give out those money, at the end of the day, when they come, they want to recoup their money. Right. And that is why we are seeing this trend of corruption and increase in corruption. I mean, when you look at the index, they are going down and down and down. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. that it's an act that we all need to condemn. So mm. I call on Laura I, to, I have pressure. to join me to condemn this act instead of trying to... Um, look at the size of the, the envelope. The size? Or <laughs> I don't have, I don't have your I power to well, tell the denomination. I have, the denomination. I have, I have the power of money pressure. I haven't yeah, seen physically. Yes. You are uh, the one giving I figures. I feel I feel haven't seen it. Those of you have said because monetization of the election is a dangerous Apologies, my time is up. They gave me some time because of Larati. Larati, I'm so grateful that you even made it into the I owe you lunch. I promise. I owe you lunch. But yes, Ambassador Sampiale says, yes, I don't have 2,000. Please, I haven't asked you for 2,000. <laughs> so you think you are going to give me 2,000? Oh, good. Yeah, uh, no, lunch. 2,000. No, lunch. Lunch, <laughs> lunch is not. <laughs> we'll be back shortly. <laughs>